What do you do when you have been given a glimpse of something beyond yourself? And here I would say, first of all, we have to reclaim the wisdom of the feminine which has been sorely overlooked in our culture, because the initial response is, what should I do? And I would add to that, how should I be? Because being is the wisdom of the feminine. And in my understanding, the, it is our doing that has caused so many problems in the world. You cannot solve a problem on the same level that created it. And we all think, what should we do? Which is a very masculine response. And my first response was, first of all, hold the experience, hold the awareness. I think awareness is very, very powerful. I think consciousness is very, very powerful. I think that what can change the world is awakened consciousness rather than lots of plans. So it's really action versus intention. In, yeah, in to which... hold the intention and then to learn to listen. And to learn to listen because my sense is life and the planet is actually very old and very wise. It has actually been through many disasters over the billions of years it has been here. And that if we realize we are part of life, we are part of the planet, even our spiritual light is part of the spiritual light of the planet. And maybe we should listen to life. We should listen to this organic, ancient, being of which we are a part. And maybe if we learn to listen and offer our awareness in service to life, a simple thing, it's just a, an inner act of, of, of prayer really, an inner act of offering. I, Sufis, we are, we are lovers, we say, beloved, how can I help you? But not just to think of some disembodied God. Mm. This, is the, this is the big problem, this is the the, the, the the monotheistic God that was kind of banished to heaven. But when we say God, when we say beloved, when we say the divine, include all of creation because it is his creation. This is the feminine side of the divine. This is the, the Sufis talk about the immanence of God, not just the transcendence of God, the, not just the deus ad absconditus, but the, the immanence of God. And if we say to that divine, which is life, I am here in service to you. Use me, as only you know how to use me. You see, then, my sense is that then, if we make a relationship, because a lot of spiritual, mystical practices, are how do you make a relationship with God? And out of that relationship, we can learn how to participate. Or life can show us how to participate, how to bring our light, our knowledge, our understanding, where it can be of most in service to the whole, because we are part of the whole. We are, if you like, our light, our divine light is a, is a light cell in the living organism of the whole. And the con there is in the world, you see, there is this divine consciousness. We, we, if you like, it was known as the anima mundi, the, the soul of the world. It has been forgotten in our culture because we have forgotten so much. It, but just because it has been forgotten, it doesn't mean that it's no longer there. There is in the world this divine consciousness. It's very, very beautiful. Tremendous power. And it knows how to transform the world. It knows how to, in a way I call, to shake off the, the debris of materialism. It, it knows how to heal the pollution that has been done to it. It is very old. It is infinitely wise. It has many, many hidden qualities. It's tremendously powerful. It, and if we can work together with that divine intelligence within the world. See, that's where I have, if you like, a certain limitation with most of the people who commit themselves to working in the fields of ecology and, and other ways of helping the world. It's they do not, they have forgotten the divine intelligence that is the world. And as somebody said, you know, why talk about sustainability if you're not going to talk about the sustainer? We cannot do this work on our own, but we, we don't know how it is. The world is such a complex living being, but there is in the world a divine intelligence that knows how to heal and transform the world. There is this, the animal mundi, the soul of the world, this, 
And it is that that helps the world to transform and helps the world to change and knows the part that we can play. So I would say, why not work with that divine intelligence? Why not work with the boss? Why not work with the creative energy of life? Rather than trying to do some sort of band-aid on the surface, full of good intentions, but very, very limited. Why not give our light back to God? Back to God not as some disembodied God, not some God that only exists in heaven, the God that is also present in every butterfly, every leaf, every, every debris in the river, every Coke can. Give it back to everything and then see what happens. Then, uh, then you're actually working with this divine intelligence within life. And that to me is much more exciting than just trying to heal the problems of the world on our own, which I don't think we can. I think in fact things have got so far that we cannot do it on our own that we need the divine back in life. We need to bring the divine back into our own life and into the life of the world. And I don't think it needs many people to do that, you see. Traditionally it has never been done by the collective. The collective benefits tremendously, of course, but I think that there are enough groups of sincere seekers around the world who can do this work together, individually and together.